welcome to the Happy Hour Podcast. I'm Shannon. And I'm Nathan. And we are your hosts sharing our crazy lives here on the ranch with you. We're husband and wife, and we're going to chat with y'all about what's happening here at the ranch, in the world, and whatever else we're fixating on. And our goal is to share our journey, some laughs, and maybe we'll all learn a little something along the way too. Welcome to Happy Hour Podcast, and buckle up. Hey everyone, welcome to the Happy Hour Podcast. You've got just me today. Nathan's not joining me today because I have a special guest. And typically when we have special guests, it's just me because Nathan can be super distracting. (laughs) So um, anyway, I am so, so excited about my guest that we have today. We have Lizzie Kengro, and she is going to talk about something that I don't know. It's just super near and dear to my heart. Um, She can talk about a lot of really cool things about just um, overall health and self-improvement, but this in particular is uh, super dear to me. And we are going to talk about how we can evict the inner mean girl. Oh my gosh. (laughs) So welcome, Lizzie. Thank you so much. Um, I'm really excited to be here. So thank you so much for having me. Yes, yes, absolutely. Now tell us where you are dialing in from. So I'm coming in from Los Angeles, um, but as you can probably tell from the accent, um, I'm not originally from California, I'm from England. So (laughs) weather's a little bit nicer in California than it is in the UK right now. (laughs) (laughs) So are you visiting California or did you make the move? No, I made the move. So um, 2019, um, I moved out and now we've live with my husband um, and our fur babies so yeah this is this is home now which is awesome oh well cool well welcome to the U.S. Um, okay so before we get into like our topic um, just tell me a little bit about yourself tell our audience a little bit about yourself what you do um, and who you serve yeah so um, I am affectionately known as the self-love sister um, <laughs> I love that um, I um, empower women with the tools that they need to ditch the diets, silence their inner mean girl, and confidently step into bo- the body that they love and sustain it, um, even when life gets busy. And the reason why I'm so passionate about what I do, I absolutely love my clients and, um, you know, on a daily basis, interacting with women and just, you know, sharing my story, sharing their stories. Um, is because, as I say, like I have a story behind this. So um, when I was 14 years old, I developed a 10 year eating disorder. um, And with that, a lot of self abusive behaviors um, towards um, my body, um, including, you know, food restriction, over exercising, but also abusive behaviors in terms of um, what I was telling myself. So um, Mm. that kind of mental abuse self abuse um and when i recovered um from my eating disorder i retrained as a nutritionist and what i found in my own practice was um time and time again women would come to me and they'd be doing all the things in terms of what they were doing to physically nourish their bodies and move their bodies um but they were being so mean to themselves and so it really was this beautiful realization of um actually until we change our mindset nothing else is probably going to change um and really what i've been doing over the past five years or so is empowering women with this whole suite of tools to um to have the body that they love um and that's why i wrote my new book reclaim the rebel is um that's really kind of the, the guidebook to these simple effective tools that I've used in my own personal journey and that my most successful clients have used to really change their whole relationship with themselves and their bodies. So yeah. I love it. And I'm about halfway through your book already. Um, and I, if, I think I have the number correctly. It's like 12 specific focuses or tools, maybe you could say yeah. that's in your book to help you get through exactly what you just said. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I call them rebellious acts. Um, That's what it uh, was. I knew it was a really (laughs) good phrase. I was like, their focuses or emphasis or tips, but I love that phrase even better. Thank you. Yeah. And that whole concept really came up, um, came about because 
everyone likes to rebel, right? I think that's kind of like an innate sort of like, oh, I'm doing something that I probably shouldn't. <laughs> um, but it's really um, a statement that we're rebelling against our inner mean girl and the diet industry. And both of them, them are kind of working hand in hand um, to shame and judge us about our bodies and keep us feeling stuck and struggling. So with these rebellious acts, they're essentially overcoming some of the battles that we have internally and externally towards having the body that we love. I love it. Oh my goodness. I love it. I love it. Okay. So that being said, I, I really feel like in the world, wherever you're from, women in general, um, I, I primarily work with women. I do retreats primarily with women. So a lot of times this podcast focuses just for women. I'm sure that the, a lot of these things can be applicable to men as well um, uh, or, or however you identify. And so my, my thought being is we all carry around this inner critic, inner mean girl <laughs> that is just constantly mm, mm, picking at whatever we're thinking or doing or saying or acting or feeling. It's just, you know, that inner uh, kind of, I love the, the phrase inner mean girl, not because it's a, a good thing, but because that is how it feels. <laughs> it's like yeah. this little bully inside you just trying to tear down how you're thinking and feeling. So that being said, tell me what it means to evict her. Like, what does that mean? Yeah, so for me, really, it's a case of um, never kind of really truly evicting her. It's a matter of um, finding a way to move through those inner mean girl moments with ease. Um, so we're human. We are always going to have um, moments or times where that inner mean girl kind of taps us on the shoulder and says, you know, oh, you know, that was silly or, you know, she starts to kind of, you know, creep in. Um, and it's the good reason I explain this in, in my book, whilst it doesn't seem helpful, what she's actually trying to do is keep us safe mm -hmm. by keeping life predictable. Um, and so she'll creep in when something comes along that is not predictable, not in the, you know, old programming. So she'll come up, um, even if we've been at this for years, um, self-development. And um, really it's a case of recognizing her, being aware, and then changing um, how we, um, how much we're listening to her. So we can go, okay, um, I hear you, I see you, but you can't sit with me at the unconditional self-love table. I'm gonna listen to a more empowering story that I have um, created for myself um, and choose, choose to use that as my story. And that's a way of easily moving through those moments where she pops up. And so, you know, I think um, having some self-compassion in this process is really, really important because it is a practice. Sometimes, you know, when we're just starting out, we're not even aware of our own inner mean girl and what she's saying. So that's really the first step. And then the next step is to just keep practicing at, at rewriting that story, whatever it is that comes up. And you're not always going to get it perfect. It's like any type of practice. <laughs> you're going to, you know, it's going to be a bit more effort, but effortful on your first couple of attempts. But when you repeat it again and again and again, it's going to feel easier. And that story is going to be more embedded into your subconscious um, so that you can move through those moments easier. So that's, I love that. that's what it means to, I believe, evict your inner mean girl. Is to, I love it. Yeah, do that. I love it. Um, a couple of things stood out um, to me for what you said. The first one is um, practice because... I don't think people realize a lot of these belief systems, which also could be, if from a scientific term, can even be correlated to neural pathways. A lot of these things were formed in our development years and, um, and then also over time, right? So you've got the two things in our, our early development and then also over time, which those things then get embedded very hardwired. So it cannot happen overnight, or at least very rarely. I, I don't want to say never. I'm sure that there are some very deep work that can happen, and maybe it can be a, a very quick process. But more often than not, changing these 
voices that you're hearing of yourself, your inner voice, your inner talk, your inner work takes time and it takes practice. Um, and it, it's like going back to it again and again. I kind of correlate it to like brushing your teeth. You brush your teeth at one time and your teeth are nice and clean, but if you don't keep brushing them, what happens, right? And so it's same like that. You have to keep going back at it and keep going back at it, keep going back at it. So, so anyway, so that's the first thing that resonated with me when you said that is that it's practice. It's a practice and you just have to keep going back to it again and again. Um, and then the second thing is, you talked about how you listen to those voices. Um, and, and it kind of made me think of the one thing that I like to focus on when I do client work is questioning the authenticity of that voice. So for instance, if your voice says you're being silly or you're stupid or you're fat or whatever it is, whatever it is that that inner mean girl is saying is to, to question that. Like, is that true versus just hearing it? right? Our thoughts, people don't realize our thoughts are not us, right? They're, they're just, it's a reactive to program. It's a reactive to visual stimulation. It's a react and a reactor piece to us. And so questioning that voice, like, wait a minute, is that really true? And I even tell clients to ask it three times. Is that really true? Is it really true? You know what I mean? Like just kind of really digging in because your first gut reaction is gonna be like, yes, it's true. Yeah. And then finding evidence to support the fact that it's not true, right? Um, and so anyway, I love that. Those, those two things really resonated with me when it comes to that inner mean girl within us. Um, yeah. What do you think is the biggest struggle when, when people are trying to evict or listen to that inner mean girl differently? I think the biggest battle is, um, as we were talking about just now, kind of practice. Um, and getting frustrated um, over time because, you know, some sometimes, as you say, it's a matter of recognizing that these thoughts aren't us they're, and they are not often true. Um, you know, we get to decide what aligns to us feeling good. It's kind of like picking out clothes in the morning, right? We can choose the clothes that make us feel a little bit yucky and that are old and worn out, or we can choose the clothes that make us feel empowered and make us feel good. So um, actually getting into that practice of choosing um, can be a bit of the battle. Um, and so with that, people tend to give up and go, I'm just not able to do this. And yeah. I think that's probably the biggest hurdle is that consistency of habit. Um, it's like any type of habit, we need to do it enough times for it to kind of really stick. So, you know, um, being 100% committed to this practice is so, so important. Because when we're 100% committed, I, I think I mentioned this in the book, we just we just do it. We just, you know, no matter how um, much of a little, little bump that we're going to go over or, um, you know, how much effort or um, even how inauthentic it might feel to start changing these stories, if we can be 100% committed and just do it, it's going to, um, first of all, prove to ourselves that we can do this and, and kind of give us momentum to keep going. And it's also going to build this kind of level of self-trust that, oh, I am capable of, you know, becoming who I want to be, of, you know, having these stories. And that kind of reinforces what you were saying about, is this really true? Is this story really true? And the more that we kind of like chip away using this habit, the more we go, oh yeah, that really isn't true because I'm choosing a different story every time. And that feels more aligned and more like my reality. So yeah. I anyway. love that. Hey guys, it's Shannon. I'm just going to interrupt for just a second to ask you for a big favor. Will you pause right now and go leave us a review if you haven't already? Or if you're not subscribed, maybe click that little plus button. We are so appreciative. I love it. Once again, two things came up. Um, 
the first thing is authentic. You talked about um, sometimes it doesn't feel authentic when you're first doing this work because it's so ingrained, right? It's so programmed in us. And maybe an example would be uh, someone who's has an illness or some sort of autoimmune something and they just are not feeling good and yet they need to change that inner voice that keeps saying you're always going to be sick you're just this is always going to be your life and you know those kind of conversations that start happening in this oh of course you're sick again or of course you know that that negative um bully inside us that just wants to talk shit all the time and so it can feel authentic when you are feeling not great to say i'm feeling good i'm going to change my story to feeling good that doesn't feel authentic. And I tell people to sometimes if, if you, if really that language is hard for you to embrace and it's doing more damage than good, then do a towards voice. So what I mean is I'm feeling better and better every day. I am looking forward to feeling better as you know, the day goes on. I, you know, like finding the voice that does feel authentic, but is still getting you in the direction that you want to go. I love that. Because I agree with you wholeheartedly. Um, sometimes it's that, you know, there's a, I think it's a, Saturday Night Live skit or something where they're like staring at each their selves in the mirror like I'm the best person in the world and they're saying all this you know mantra affirmation stuff that just it sounds ridiculous the way they're making it sound or the way they present it and it just it, it it gives the impression that it's a bunch of bullshit which I don't believe it is I know for a fact it can work it's just you have to find the authentic voice that works for you absolutely yeah that's and I think that's why people kind of like um have this thing against toxic body positivity is like it can feel really fake and inauthentic and I think really it's finding the story or the phrasing that you can believe and that doesn't feel completely unrealistic um you know an example that I always give is I have a huge scar across my stomach um where I had a, a an operation as a three-month-old baby and as a teenager I was like oh my gosh it's so ugly I can't ever wear a swimsuit blah 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 um but now I call it my survival scar so I'm not like oh my goodness I love my scar so much because that's not true but I can kind of like phrase it in a way that feels good and that feels empowering right? I love so it's that. Like, you know the moving towards it's choosing something that kind of is empowering yeah. as opposed to something that just feels completely blah and fun. yes 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 I love it um and then the second thing when you were talking about it um the challenges and stuff you know awareness of it is like one of the first steps right just being aware and there's a, a cognitive behavioral tip that I like to share when it comes to awareness because it's surprising how much we're not aware of our thoughts throughout the day, um, especially our negative ones, because we tend to be immersed in them. Part of that's cultural, right? Look at the media. Does the media ever share anything positive? Holy hell, they're, they're bent on sharing the worst of the worst and creating such division in the world. And I, it doesn't even matter what side of whatever, it's just they're, that's their hell bent on doing. And so we don't realize how much we're immersed in this kind of negative self-talk, negative environment, just, you know, constant duration of it. And so awareness of it is the first step. And one of the things that I teach um, people is you can use like a bracelet. I like those stretchy bead type bracelets. And for example, for what you do, I usually use it towards like complaining or gossiping the outer voice. But if your outer voice is more quiet and not as negative and it's your inner voice that you're struggling with you could use it the same way which is um I don't snap it although that is a good one too I actually switched it from hand to hand so that it doesn't do a negative smack because it's kind of like a little tiny bit of a negative like punishment almost it's I more of an awareness that. so I start on this wrist and then I have a negative my inner girl is being mean to me and I just switch it over so that I just say hey and then you can even, if you wanted for what you do, you can even trigger their question. Like as you switch it, is that true? And then you switch it again. And the goal is you get to 30 days where you didn't have to move your bracelet. Um, but each day, each time you have to move it, you start over. Uh, even if you get to nine amazing. days. Yeah. Even if you get to nine days and then you have that inner mean girl, you switch it. I can tell you when I do the work with the outer language, um, it can take six months to a year to get the bracelet on, to stay on one wrist for 30 days. I my guess, and I've never done it, but I think maybe I'll do it. Maybe I'll test this out. Um, my guess is for the inner mean girl, it could take twice as long. 
I would imagine so. And please do test that out because I love that idea. That is gold. That's yeah. really, really cool. I and love it. I did borrow it from uh, Will Bowen. He has a great book that says A Complaint-Free World. I just tailored it for the work that I do. Um, but it's such a great cognitive behavioral awareness tool. And, and the, the scary part is that when you start doing it, you're like, oh my gosh, how am I living this life with all this negative verbal or now inner, whatever may be the case, you, you won't even, you won't, you'll just be shocked. <laughs> yeah, that's incredible. I love that as an awareness tool, but also a, um, a habit tracker almost. Um, yes. Because as you say, you know, this could take a while. And so it's a great way of sort of monitoring that progress and giving yourself that space to be like, all right, well, I'm not aiming for a specific time to be done, but this is a way of me kind of, you know, staying with it because you wear the bracelet all the time. Yes. That is genius. I love it. I love it. I love Thanks. it. Thanks. Yeah. And you want to make sure it's stretchy because it does get moved a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you know. or something. Yeah. <laughs> Um, if you don't mind, I'd love for you to share like maybe one of your um, rebellious acts from your book, just a, a tiny little synopsis or outline of one of those rebellious acts. Um, I've already gone through a few of them, like I said, and they're awesome, but maybe one that you feel like really resonates with everyone or just one that's foremost in your brain. Yeah. I mean, we kind of covered one of them um, just now with rewrite your stories. So that's kind of all about, you know, look, being aware and then um, changing your stories to something that's more empowering. But I think another one that really stands out for a lot of people is Rebellious Act 11, and that is let go of comparison. Mm. Um, because um, again, like there's a lot of external noise. And so what that can do is that can cause us to should on ourselves. Um, and when we get into comparison, that is the fast track to body dissatisfaction to you know a very loud and a mean girl um and that can feel um very disempowering um so yeah let go of comparison is a is a huge rebellious act um and one that i talk about in the book i love it i have two quotes that i live by um and one of them is comparison is the thief of joy and so it's, it's so true. I mean, it's kind of like you think about, let's say you buy your first brand new car and it's just lovely, whatever it is, it doesn't even matter. It's just lovely. But then if you start looking at other people's cars, you start going, well, I don't even like my car anymore because look at that car, you know, and you can apply that to any aspect of your life, body, achievements, spouse, children, it doesn't even matter. Yeah. So, um, and that's where I feel like social media can be super damaging. Um, and it's a, it's a catch 22 for me and for us, because we obviously use it in our business, but as a personal tool, I think it can be super damaging uh, for our psyche and, um, uh, uh, almost, <laughs> almost all of the subconscious work that's happening when you're on social, social media is comparison. Mm -hmm. And so. Anyway, I love that. And I think that that is so huge. And if we could learn to just focus on our best selves and what that looks like, which has nothing to do with the person next to you or across the world from you, um, we would be in such a better space mentally and otherwise. So, well, would you tell us where we could find you and like what kind of work you do with people individually and how they can get a hold of you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I offer a range of ways to work with me, one-to-one, um, -one, um, self-paced study, um, and then of course the book, which is available on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, et cetera. But probably the best place to, to find me and just continue the conversation is Instagram. We're just talking about social media. Um, so my handle is at nutrition by Lizzie and Lizzie's spelled with a Y. Um, and if you follow and DM me with the word gift, then I have a special goodie bag of gifts for your listeners um, yay. So, yay. <laughs> awesome well that is so cool and I will have all of your links too in the notes so wherever you are watching or listening to this uh, her information will be down there too and she would love for you to contact her on social media so you can get that free gift because um, there is some really cool things about social media I'm not completely poo-pooing it I, I promise um, it just it can be curated to make uh, a better experience for yourself yeah, but anyway. I feel like it's something that, you know, should be 
again, that's should. I don't like that <laughs> word, but I think there's a need to teach it in schools a little bit about how we um, navigate social media. I couldn't agree more. I just, um, I think it just went out this week or last week. I'm not sure. Um, I was writing about, you know, if, of course, if we could just get rid of it all together as a person, it could be great, but I don't think that's realistic in today's world and in the future. And so you have to put parameters on it and you can, um, you can curate your feed to make you feel good versus the other way. And that's like the work that you do, you know, looking at those types of things and, you know, the people that you love that make you feel good and removing the toxic um, nonsense and the noise that's out there, including um, political shit, even if it's your own quote unquote party, sometimes they're all just, uh, and so um, <laughs> that's the best way to describe it. I, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't even matter where you fall. They're all just, ugh. and so, um, you know, just curating your feed and then also, uh, putting time limits on how long you're on there because you can spend a lot of time scrolling through other people's lives for getting to live your own. But like I said, there's also some really cool things about social media. So uh, staying connected in different ways and with family across the world, there's just really cool ways to connect and, and we appreciate that. And I appreciate you being on the show. So thank you so, so very much. Yeah, um, I love the work that you do. It's very, very important and what we are experiencing in today's world. And I'm just so appreciative. So thank you. I appreciate you for having me. So thank you. And uh, yeah, I hope this has been valuable to your listeners. Absolutely. Thanks for listening to the Happy Hour Podcast. If you'd like to learn more, visit us online at www.happyhourpodcast.org. And you're welcome. <laughs>